is up, my camera crew? If you guys are new to this channel, my name is Sam Aldrich, aka Sam the Cameraman. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe, follow along because big things are always happening on this channel and you don't want to miss out. But if you guys didn't see today, Blackmagic announced DaVinci Resolve 18 and it is epic. They made a lot of cool new changes. There is a lot to go through from the edit page, the Fairlight page, some fusion stuff, a lot in the color tab. And I think over the next couple weeks, I'm going to spend time going over my favorite new things in DaVinci Resolve. And today we're going to be going over their new like mesh tracker. I think they call it the surface tracker. So I'm going to go over that with you guys today. And then later on throughout the week, we're going to go over like object, ma uh, their new object masking tool. All right. So now that we are here in the color tab, we can get going with this surface tracker. As you can see, I already have it typed in surface tracker. You want to drag that in and you want to drag it straight into your node graph. You don't want to drag it into a node already because then you can't add things to it. If you're trying to add like a logo or something, you, you want to make sure that you drag it straight into the node graph, not onto a node. So you can just connect that up here, just like that. And with the surface track, or with the surface uh, tracker selected, let's scrub to where we want to start our track. Make sure you have the bounds selected and you want to just select the area in which you want your logo to be. And I want my logo to be right in this general area right there. You want to come over to the mesh tab now. And with the mesh tab selected, you're going to see all these little points pop up. And that's every point that's going to be tracked and um, you're going to get tracking data from. So you can control it. You can increase the amount of points, lower it. Um, I like to, you know, keep as many, uh, you know, you want to keep a good amount, but you don't want too many. The more you have, the longer it's going to take the track because the more information your computer needs to compute. Um, and then you can control your spacing. I don't really mess with that too much. Next thing we want to do is come to our track tab. And you just want to hit the arrow front and back. I'm just going to track the whole thing from start to finish and then finish to back. All right. So once that is done and complete, we can come over here to the result tab and a little result uh, yeah, tab right there. And we can just scrub through and see that that is tracked pretty dang good. If we want to scroll out, I mean, come on, look at that. DaVinci resolves. I don't know if this is artificial, like AI, artificial intelligence or what this is, but their tracking is seriously next level. I absolutely love what they got going on here. So now what we want to do is we want to add in that DaVinci Resolve logo. So we're going to open up our media pool, grab our PNG, drag and drop it in. We can close our media pool out. With this mat selected, we want to hit Alt S and make sure this alpha output here is connected up. Pro, or the output of our, we want to drag the output of our logo to the input of the surface tracker. Same with the alpha. And with that completely connected now as we can see we want to select the surface tracker again and with our result tab selected we want to hit overlay placement and we want to do compositing we want to open all these up because we're going to start playing with what's going on here so we want to make sure we're in overlay overlaying placement once you select go to reference this little grid pops up and as you can see when we start scrolling this all around you can see the logo inside of that so we have to shrink this up so you just want to drag these corners down and if you grab by the corner it's going to warp the perspective as you can see we don't want to do that so we want to just grab grab the edges of this right now and we can change perspectives and everything as we go we want to scroll in we're going to make it a little bit smaller and if there's a better way anyone knows like i said i'm still figuring all this stuff out um, to change the perspective on all this stuff, let me know. I am always down to learn. Um, but now you wanted to start playing with these corners, make it look like it's matching his shirt. So something like that. Now, once you have it where you like the size that you want it to be, now we want to make it look like it's tracked onto his shirt, like it's a part of his shirt. So what I want to do is come down to my composite type. I'm going to hit overlay. I'm going to bring the opacity down just a little bit. And now if we select this, we can see, I mean, right off the bat, you can see that it is tracked to the creases of his shirt. We want to come back to right here and we just hit play. Look at that. 
I mean, come on. That looks so... So, let's see what it looks like here. Full screen. I mean, if you if we just go slowly, we can see that it's moving with the shirt and the in the ripples of his shirt. It is absolutely incredible. The power of this new mesh tracker is endless. So if we come here, we can add a tattoo to her leg. So let's do this all completely all over one more time. We're going to have our surface tracker. Hold shift. You can drag it right in there. Let's create our bounds. We're going to add the DaVinci Resolve logo to her leg to make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to go mesh. I want to create the number of points if it can. And we'll hit track. We're going to track it back and forth. And we have it tracked. So now we're going to go result. And we want to bring our media pool in, drag in our DaVinci Resolve logo, turn off the media pool. We're going to hit Alt S, connect the alpha out. Input in, alpha out, and now if we go to reference, we're already there, so we're going to scroll out, and we're just going to start shrinking this down, and you know what, we might actually warp the whole image just a little bit, just to make like a cool little skinny, elongated DaVinci Resolve logo. So now if we hit composite type, and if we really wanted to, because it's a little out of focus, what we could probably do is add a blur, make it just a little bit more natural. And just like that, we have a tattoo tracked on to our talent. Is This is, let me know what you guys think of the tutorial. Let me know what you guys think of this tool and uh, give it a try. Like, put some links in the comments below how you guys use this. Would love to see some of the work that you guys are doing. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you're following along. Do not miss out on any of the new content coming out. If you guys haven't already checked out my new LUTs, they are in the link in the description at uh, their, I think it's uh, www.samthecameraman.com slash shop. They are epic. Um, they will take your color grading to a whole new level and make it quick and fast as well. So if you don't want to mess around with creating crazy looks, give them a try. Let me know what y'all think. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye.